This course will take you on a tour through the ear. The course will describe physiological characteristics and explain how the ear transmits sounds from the environment to the brain. The hearing pathway transforms vibrations of air molecules into a perception of sound in the brain. The pathway begins with the ear. The ear is normally divided into three sections, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The tour begins at the outer ear. The outer ear, also called the pinna, is placed on the side of the head and forms the visible part of the hearing pathway. It consists of skin-covered cartilage and mainly serves to collect the sound vibrations and direct them into the ear. The shape and folds of the outer ear help to locate where sounds are coming from. The entrance to the ear canal is just in front of the center of the outer ear. The ear canal is a small tube-shaped cavity that exceeds from the outer ear to the eardrum. It has a diameter of approximately 7 millimeters and a length of about 25 to 30 millimeters. Since the ear canal bends, it is not possible to see the eardrum from the outside. However, using a small tool called an otoscope, it is possible to inspect the ear. This examination is called an otoscopy. The ear canal consists of a softer outer part and becomes bony further in as the tube-shaped cavity continues into the temporal bone. The skin of the outer part of the ear canal contains a number of wax-producing glands which function as a protective self-cleaning mechanism. When the sound vibrations reach the end of the ear canal, the eardrum is set in motion. The eardrum is also called the tympanic membrane. It forms an extremely thin, airtight membrane, which creates a seal at the end of the ear canal. As the eardrum moves, sounds are no longer transmitted by vibrations of air molecules, but by vibrations of other structures of the hearing pathway. This means that the movement of air molecules is now transformed into mechanical movements. The sound now continues into the middle ear, which is parted from the ear canal by the eardrum. The middle ear is a small air-filled cavity in the temporal bone. The middle ear contains the ossicular chain. The ossicular chain consists of the three smallest bones in our body the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The malleus consists of a long process which is attached to the eardrum. The head of the malleus attaches to the body of the incus. The long process of the incus attaches to the stapes, which has a small foot plate implanted in the oval window in the inner ear. This way, the vibrations of the eardrum are transmitted via the ossicular chain to the inner ear. The middle ear bones can be influenced by two small muscles. The most important one is the stapedius muscle, which will contract to protect the ear from loud sounds. The oval window forms the entrance to the inner ear. The inner ear consists of a snail shell shaped structure with the Latin name cochlea. The cochlea coils about two and three-quarter times and has an unfolded length of 30 millimeters. The individual coils are divided into three fluid-filled canals that extend throughout the length of the cochlea. In the middle canal, we find the organ of corti, which contains the sensory cells, the so-called hair cells that connect to the nerve fibers. In the middle of the cochlea, all nerve fibers are gathered into one nerve, the hearing nerve. The sensory cells consist of one row of 4,000 inner hair cells and three rows with a total of 12,000 outer hair cells. 
especially the inner hair cells, are responsible for transmitting sound to the hearing nerve. The hair cells located in the lower part of the cochlea are mainly stimulated by high frequency or treble sounds, whereas the hair cells in the upper part of the cochlea are stimulated by low frequency or bass sounds. The sound vibrations from the eardrum to the foot plate of the stapes that is attached to the oval window creates movements of the fluid in the cochlea. The fluid movements stimulate the hair cells which generate neural impulses. This means sound information is transmitted to the hearing nerve, mainly via the inner hair cells. The sound has now been transformed to electrical impulses in the nerve fibers, which are quickly transmitted along the hearing nerve into the central nervous system. The hearing nerve leaves the cochlea and the temporal bone through a small duct and reaches the brainstem. On its way through the brainstem and later on the middle brain, the hearing nerve passes a number of relay stations called neurons. After the first relay station, a major portion of the nerve fibers cross over to the opposite side of the brain stem. This means that the major nerve representation from the right ear is in the left side of the brain stem, and vice versa. When the hearing nerve leaves the brain stem, it proceeds through the middle brain to the hearing cortex. This is the end station of the hearing pathway and our tour. This was an introduction to the hearing sense. We have seen how sounds start out as vibrations in the air, which are collected by the outer ear, transform to mechanical vibrations in the middle ear, then into vibrations in the fluid system of the cochlea in the inner ear, and finally into electrical impulses sent to the brain. Thank you for your time.